Week 7, Problem 10. A rectangular coil consists of 150 closely wrapped turns, turns and has dimensions of 0.4 meters, 0.3 meters, and the coil is hinged along the y-axis as plane makes an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis. What is the magnitude of the torque exerted on the coil by a uniform magnetic field directed in the positive x-direction when the current is 1.2 amps in the direction shown? Okay, well this one kicks it up a notch. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to start by just throwing out formulas. They mentioned torque. So I'm going to say we have torque equals R cross F. Okay? Good. Got that. So here, we're also going to know that force equals... Um, we're going to use fire incinerates the little bunnies for this guy. So I L cross B. This is the same as F equals Q V cross B. I just we just switch it around a little bit. Okay? So let's move this guy. There we go. So we have R cross I L cross B. Okay? So I'm not gonna worry too much about the direction at this point, I'm just going to try and get that conceptually. So I'm going to break this down and look at each individual wire. So I'm going to start by looking at this cross wire right here. So, and if I draw it like this, and draw this like that, we decompose this wire into uh, perpendicular and parallel parts. But this guy is along the x-axis. go and this guy's along the y-axis. I think that's y. Eh, maybe z? I don't know. I'm not too worried. We we got this. So when we look at it, we're gonna have and I'm looking at just a force right now. I L cross B. So I this way cross B which is the x direction, we're gonna have a force going upward. And then we're going to have another portion that's along the x-axis, which we just don't matter because the angle between that is zero. And sine of zero is zero. All right, and we're looking at the bottom portion. So for the bottom portion, we're going to have current going into the board, B going towards the x-axis, we're going to have a force going down. So this guy's going to be going down. And since the hinge is here, and I assume it swings kind of like a screen door, the there's going to be no um, uh, the there's going to be no rotation in that direction. You can still say there's torque, but it might as well be that the point of rotation is in the middle. We have opposing forces, so nothing happens. All right. So now we're going to look at this edge right here. See how that guy interacts. So we're going to have let's see here. We're going to have current going down. Yep. This way current going down, a magnetic field that way, so it's going to be outward. But it's not going to be really outward from the screen door, you know, this loops of coil, it's going to be this direction. It's going to be out of the board. It's going to be um, perpendicular to the x-axis. And it's not going to be, um, uh, so we have force equals IL cross B, it's not going to be completely L cross B because there's going to be a sine component in there. Specifically, probably, I suspect, sine of 30. But we'll worry about that in a sec. Alright, now we're going to look at this guy over here. Find the force. This guy, this guy, force. There we go. Alright, so then over here, I know when I point to the screen, you guys can't actually see it, but I'm going to pretend like you can. Alright, so we've got current going up, and then we got magnetic field going that way, so it's going to be inward. So this guy is going to be into the page. So my first thought though is we're really concerned about the torque. So even though I'm finding force, the torque is what matters. And torque is R cross F. And here, if this is where we're rotating at, then our radius from where the force is to where we're rotating is zero. So in this case, R is going to be zero. 
So this guy, this force right here, mm -hmm. there we go, doesn't matter. Alright, so now I'm going to cross out things that are dead to me that I don't care about. So this guy, radius is zero, doesn't matter. These guys, exactly opposite of each other, so they don't matter. So the only force we're going to care about is this guy right here. Okay. So, maybe we can just plug in numbers and get an answer. Hmm, that'd be nice. Okay. Hmm. Maybe we can. So, Mike, let's see here. So, we need to find out the distance from the point of rotation for this guy is going to be B. So, that's what our R is going to be. So, we're going to have B be 0 0.3 meters. And I'm finding this for just one coil. After I find it for one coil, they're all going to be the same, so it's going to multiply by the number of coils. So, B is 0.3. So, we have 0 0.3. Got it. Okay. We're good there. Then the length of the wire, what we're talking about is the length of the current carrying wire. So that's actually going to be A. So it's going to be 0.4. And make this 0.4. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to have magnetic field, which is... Can you tell us magnet? 0 0.5. 0 0.5 Teslas. Which is worth about 30 Edison's. I'm a... I'm a Tesla guy over in Edison, as pretty much everyone is, I assume, at this point. 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Hmm. I should probably actually do more research in Edison versus Tesla. My natural animosity towards Edison is probably unjustified and unfounded. All right. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and then we need the angle. So I'm going to guess right now sine, and then I'm going to verify. Sine of 30. All right. So the idea is, is it going to be maximized or minimized? So if the loop of coil, so magnetic fields want to align each other. So this loop of coil is going to create a magnetic field like it's a um, similar to a loop. Um, so we have a magnetic field. So I'm going to pretend like the coil wraps is um, theta is zero for this case. So that we're going to have the coil go in this direction. Or we're going to have the um, magnetic field going this direction. Oh, right there, like that. So that's going to provide the maximum torque because they'll be at 90 degrees from each other. And they want to align each other. So here, um, they're mostly aligned. So we want sine of... So we want it to be the biggest number possible. So if we had theta equals zero, we'd want to have maximum torque. So to have zero equal maximum, oh, that's going to be cosine, because cosine of zero is one. Oh, I just failed. I failed. That's okay. That's why I always check after I guess. That's why checking is at least as important as the guessing. Hmm, is it? Hmm. Which is more important, guessing or checking? Either way, it doesn't matter. We're going to cosine. So we're going to get cosine because if theta was zero, we would have maximum torque because we'd have the magnetic fields perpendicular to each other and they want to align. So to get to maximize torque, we want, the, we want to use the cosine. All right. And... Hmm. Is that going to be all we want? Yeah. I think we're good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. 0 0.3 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 times cosine of 30. 0 0.052. 0 0.052. Equals 0 0.05. And a 2. Alright, so now we have 150 coils, so we're going to have to multiply it by 150. So we get the total torque. 7.79. I'm good with that. Total torque. 
torque total. Was it 7.9? 7.79. There we go, seven, seven, and a nine. There we go. Uh, it's probably Newton meters, Newton meters, yep. Okay, now let's look at this real quickly, see if there's anything obvious that I missed. Might be, but I missed it, so I don't have to worry about it. That's a nice thing about not knowing stuff. Ignorance is bliss. All right, seven, oop, point. Seven, nine. If you're looking downward from the positive y direction, what is the expected direction of rotation of the coil? Alright, so the magnetic fields are going to want to align. So we have the coil going this direction, and we have the magnetic field going this direction, so the coil wants to turn this way. Another way of looking at this is we know this force right here. So if we have a coil here, and I grab one side of the coil right here, and we're pulling it this direction, which is going to, if I'm looking at it from the top, be rotating it like this. So is that clockwise? Yeah, I'm gonna say that's clockwise. So I'm gonna say the answer to this guy is clockwise. Bam. And that is how I would do that problem. All right, that's problem 10, on to problem 11.